I have become the best known sport flooring contractor in the world, and I'm just getting started. Hello, this is Paul Nelson with Western Sport Floors, Wyoming Wood Floors, coming to you today from C.M. Russell High School in Great Falls, Montana. We are going to talk gym floor maintenance. I have with us uh, the superintendent, or excuse me, the principal, uh, assistant principal, some basketball coaches, some maintenance folks. Thank you all for coming, and thanks to our administrators to really successfully do this. I have found that it helps to really have administrators that are involved, so thank you. Everything that I'm going to say, I, I get in 250 to 300 gyms a year, throughout a year, and so it's so just kind of my observations of people and facilities that do things really well. It isn't meant to be a criticism, anything you're doing now or, or may do in the future. I'm sure there's many right ways to do this. And so these are just my opinions, my ideas, the observations that I've made on facilities that really, really look nice and how those folks keep them up. In the state of Montana, if any of you all get a chance to get through Mile City and stop by the Mile City Community College, that head of maintenance at the Mile City Community College may do a better job of gym floor maintenance than any guy I've ever seen. So there's something if you happen to be traveling with sports, stop by the Mile City Community College. So when I think about cleaning a gym, <coughs> The first thing that I think about is keeping my cleaning utensils clean, my cleaning things clean. The, the, the props that I brought with today are the cleaning instruments that we use in my own shop and warehouse, okay? I wash these in the washing machine often. Uh, you know? <laughs> in my mind, when I see cleaning equipment that's absolutely filthy, I say, how can that really help much? You know what I mean? That can be put in the wash machine. These dust moth heads can be put in the wash machine. I like to see a facility where somewhere in a corner, and I don't just know where you do it here, but you have some of these cleaning instruments hanging up, particularly the dust mop. Because the dust mop isn't just the item that your engineers or your custodians will use. Your dust mop really can be used by all the users of the gym. There's nothing wrong with a kid helping to maintain the facility, in my humble opinion. Uh, so maybe after basketball practice, it's just part of your routine. Somebody runs the dust mop over. Uh, I don't know if we have a fly ed teacher here, but think about this. When the math teacher is up writing on the whiteboard and, and she's done with a class and she's written several things up on the whiteboard, and it, it's time for the next class. She doesn't call down an engineer or custodian to wipe off the whiteboard. It's her classroom. There's certain things you do just to keep your classroom in order. No different, really, from a phi ed teacher. If it's a mess, have a kid or the phi ed teacher run this around. It's everybody's responsibility to keep the facility looking great. Now, from the custodian, from the engineer standpoint, keep this thing close where it's easy to use and it's clean, hanging up around a corner somewhere so that these users can help you maintain this facility, okay? If you don't take anything else out of today, take the thought that you should be running this across the floor multiple times a day, not just your custodial crew, but all the users of this facility, okay? Make sense? <clears throat> the one question that I get is slippery floors. Paul, our floors are slippery. Your darn finish is slippery. Well. Our finish, we on this particular floor, we've used Bone of Super Sport. That's a premium water-based finish. It's used in D1 colleges. It's used on professional basketball courts. The Bone of Super Sport is not a slippery finish. If there's a slippery floor situation, it's a, it's a maintenance issue. It truly is. Human beings, there's a certain amount of body oil. So when we're out and we're sweating and that drop of sweat hits the floor, the water evaporates and there's a little bit of oil left. And in time, with lots of that, you'll actually get a skim coating of oil across your floor. So occasionally, we're gonna need to take a mop and at least hand mop those basketball coaches. I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me, but right? When you're, it's, you're all doing it in the keys and the three point, that's where all the use gets done. So from our engineers, our custodians, you look and say, oh my God, trying to mop a 14,000 foot gym, I'm gonna quit right now, right? You don't have to mop 14,000 feet. 
come on in here and mop that three-pointer, just mop that key area real quick, and you're down the road, okay? <clears throat> There's many different products. When you talk about cleaning the floor, I really like basic coatings. They have a product, Squeaky and IFT. So Squeaky is your neutral cleaner. It's your everyday, it's alcohol-based, it's very, it's not gonna hurt the finish, it's not gonna hurt the paint. It's just your everyday kind of cleaner, okay? You put a little bit of that in a mop bucket, make sure that, <clears throat> that that mop is damp. We do not want that thing splashing out on the floor and getting a lot of water. So we're, we're wringing it out, we're gonna walk through that key, get that area clean. And if the rest of the floor is dust mopped, you're probably good on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to mop the whole huge floor, okay? I also like and just a broom and a towel. They sound like a broken record. These are floor towels that I've used on multiple gym floors, but they're clean, okay? So a little bit of squeaky. I'd still use a mop bucket. Get this thing. In a, in a solution that's a four to one concentrate. Bring the thing out. And then I'm gonna bring my floor towel with my broom across the floor. And keep moving that broom back. Keep getting a clean spot. And then at some point, you can carefully flip that over, straighten it out. And now you've got another clean side on that broom. We'll keep going, okay? I'm gonna talk about floor scrubbers. So I have my hat on right now. I am a, a distributor for Robbins Sport Surfaces Action Sport Floors, okay? From their standpoint, we're never gonna use a scrubber on a gymnasium floor, it voids your warranty, okay? Now, I'm going to put my other hat on. Now I'm Paul Nelson who deals with facilities in a seven state area and I'll tell you that almost everybody uses floor scrubbers. They save a tremendous amount of time and so in the world that I live in I'm just going to tell you most people use floor scrubbers. Your manufacturer's warranty expires in a year anyway so it isn't like you're losing a lot after the first year and that's probably that first year the really vulnerable time for that floor when it's acclimating completely to your facility. We'll tell you most people use floor scrubbers. Where I see facilities get into trouble with floor scrubbers when that's the only implement they use. They're using it every day, sometimes two times a day, and the floor can't tolerate that much water constantly being put on the floor. If you're doing what we talked about, um, hitting those keys, maybe under the bleachers with a little damp mop, uh, dust mopping multiple times a day and you've just had a, a large event in your gym and you've got a bunch of soda spills under the bleachers and you need that scrubber to, to actually clean that gym doing it once every two weeks once a month maybe on rare occasions once a week probably isn't going to hurt the floor probably okay so here's some thoughts use a very light pad a white pad preferably okay the other area that I've personally seen people get in trouble with a floor scrubber is they fill the thing up, 30 gallons of water, bring it out to the middle of the floor. Ha, gosh, it's lunchtime. Off to lunch they go, and the devil who never sleeps, that's the moment that he comes in and makes the valve leak. Okay? <laughs> so if you use a floor scrubber, use it carefully, use it seldom, and have somebody super responsible that brings that machine out on the floor, make sure your squeegee's working good, <clears throat> and get it off the floor as quickly as you can. I absolutely recognize that it saves a tremendous amount of time, and to really keep the facility looking the way you want it to, in a facility that gets as much use as yours does, it's probably a tool that's legitimate to use, okay? With your floor scrubber, perhaps you wanna go around prior to using it, and use a more intensive product, like intensive floor treatment from Squeaky. 
Now understand, Bona, Hilliard, Mark Chemical, Vetco, whoever you're already using is making a similar product to this. I'm not here to sell product. It's not what I do. It's just, these just happen to be the product that we use in our organization. But if you use a product like this, like with a mop, uh, and, and maybe you pre-mop under the bleachers in your keys, uh, in some of those high traffic areas, and then come back with your auto scrubber and rinse with a neutral rinse, okay? The challenge with using a, a real intensive uh, floor cleaner is that they should always be rinsed. And it's hard to rinse with just a mop and a bucket. So if you're going to be using your scrubber, uh, that's a great time to use your more intensive floor treatment just prior to scrubbing the floor. Okay. Unless you thought that I would give you anything new I have nothing new to give you. The tried and true probably are tried and true because they work very well. The old tennis ball on a stick for scrubbing out the nasty black marks works really, really well. Does anybody have any questions on the things that we've covered thus far? Please, Roger. Sorry. We use the, the uh, tennis ball on the floor and we get um, a uh, cloudy appearance left over it like we've scratched the floor mm -hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't come out and you as you look through the through the shine of the lights on the floor mm -hmm. you can actually see those spots we did a lot of them in fact if you kind of look down over there <laughs> on the, uh, the side of the gray there on the left side on the other end i do see it. you can see those spots where we it. hit because this floor gets hit hard yes there are so many marks on this floor it's just hard um, at this point in time, we're just kind of letting them sit right now because it's doing, it's doing the scuffing on the floor from what we think. Okay. Um, so I guess what I, I was waiting to ask you, what do we do to take care of the marks because they are prevalent everywhere. Everywhere. I, I guess in my world, and I see exactly what you're talking about, and I know how detailed and, and how meticulous you are on this floor, Roger, and I love you and I appreciate you. I guess the thing that I would say is, I'd rather see those, frankly, than black marks on my floor, but I understand they bug you. <laughs> so, I mean, so that's, so that's what we're going to, we're going to have that. We're going to, I mean, we're going to have that cloudy appearance then. I would try actually wet mopping those areas. So, you know, we've, we've, we've gone through, we've done the scrubber, um, you know, you do the, the foot, the foot deal. Yeah. I mean, even doing the rubbing the foot does less, less marking on it than what the tennis balls have done. So. That's kind of what my guys have done now. Have gotten okay. to the, they're out here doing the dance, doing the dance. So, <laughs> so because it doesn't do it doesn't do as much damage, or, you know, right? What we think is damage to the floor. So makes sense. Carrie, somebody else had a question. Just when you're using that push broom and that towel to do a floor like this, I mean, how many towels are you going through? I'll go through however many it takes. I mean, towels. This is a two dollar and fifty cent towel from Walmart. And what do I care if it takes me 15 of them, right? You've got a huge washer back there. <laughs> Throw them in. And this squeaky alcohol base dries so fast, you could literally do some of this even at halftime during a game. Very effective. You see it on, on televised games. They're doing it all the time. They've always got somebody out on that floor. And that's the type of product. Again, I'm not here to sell product. A lot of people have alcohol-based neutral cleaners. Okay? Great question. Anybody up there? So the next, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about recoating the floor. And I just want to address that, Roger. <clears throat> I so appreciate you and how you want to keep this floor and to really keep it to the standard you want to keep it. This is a two time a year recoat floor, frankly. Um, and, and let's talk about this room, you guys. They've done studies. Nine out of every 10 people that visit this school are coming to this room. You know, they should be going to the classroom, but they're coming here. <laughs> it's just the reality. So having this room look good is monstrously important to the image of your school. Fair enough? All right, for West, yes, Alan. How many coats? Every time you finish, how many coats should I put down? Yeah, if we're doing water-based finish, I'd be looking for two coats, okay? And, I, and we'll go in next now and do the recoat process, okay? Any other questions on maintenance? Is this one of my FIA teachers? Yes. Awesome. Boy, I kind of threw you under the bus a little bit saying the FIA teacher had to dust them off the floor. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Make a kid do it. That's my <laughs> advice. For Western Sport Floors and Wyoming Wood Floors coming to you from Great Falls, Montana. This is Paul Nelson. You make it a great day.